Hey guys, what's going on? It's Green Zero here, back with another Command & Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath video commentary, and welcome to the Champions League. This is the Kane's Wrath Champions League here, and we have two players on deck. This is from round one, so this is round one. As of recording this video, round two is currently in progress. I will probably bring an update sometime this week once round two has completed, as I promised. Periodic updates, but this is match of the week. This is match of the week, and when the top... Northeast side, we have Futurama Russian playing as GDI, and that means Shock Trepid Russian is on the southwest, also as GDI. GDI Mira, best of eight. It can be a draw scenario. This is Shock Trepid's home game. So if you're not familiar with how the home games work, it means that basically Shock Trepid gets to pick every single map of the series, no questions asked. And then uh, it's assuming that in the second half of the league, um, it will switch and Futurama will get to uh, pick every single map in the series, but we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, Futurama, sorry, not Futurama. I'm used to Futurama being Cyan here, but he's not. Shock Trevor has picked that color. And so far, it looks like all scouts have completely avoided one another. Gonna dig a fox hole here for Shock Trap, but sort of just kissing the Tiberium there. Takes a little bit of hull damage. Won't matter a, a whole lot. The fox hole will protect them from Tiberium exposure. So in case you didn't know that, you can dig fox holes there. He's gonna gun down at this squad. So Shock Trap are gonna deny it, that scout. Well, somewhat deny. I mean, he's already pretty much seen the war factory. He knows there's no airfield coming. Power down comes. This is awfully strange, but no, it looks like uh, that's gonna power back up. Futurama pops his ref. He's only like half a second behind, so both these guys are pretty much on par. Futurama did go for additional scouts. I believe Shock Trepid just has a singular scout there, and he would have got one from his draft as well. Can't see too much. Yeah, he's pretty blind, isn't he? So Futurama opting to go for additional scouts here. Shock Trap is going to expand. He's not too worried about being pushed. A Pitbull is going to come out. It's going to be more Pitbulls. We can see that's building way too fast to be anything else. So he's going to come out with a couple of Pitbulls. Futurama wants to take the early victory. Again, just reiterating, this is a best of a series. Shock Trap it spots the Expo, so he knows that there's no Master Leaf antics coming uh, just yet. Uh, look at that. We'll clean up another scout. But again, Futurama can see this as well. The intelligence game, these guys. We saw a brilliant series on the stream in the last tournament between Drive and Futurama, where Futurama had a complete and utter intelligence victory in that series there and really made a massive drive because of it. It just goes to show how important it is in this matchup. He's going to win that fight, hands down. Three pitbulls are coming down here. There is a refinery he powers down, but the harvester is already out. He's going to have to pop a turret. He's going to have to pull the harvester, and when you see the enemy pulling the harvester, you know it means, oh, actually, no, he's got some pitbulls coming back here. He's not going to get that harvester. A oh, very good control there from Shock Trepid, by the way. I don't know what it is about R16. I think harvesters are the worst they've ever been in R16. CGF has definitely reworked something that he's not telling us about. And harvesters seem to do everything except the the order you actually give them. So it's a bit of trouble there. Uh, we'll clean up another squad. These three pitbulls are over here. They will be joined by a fourth pitbull. Just small amounts of units so far. I think Shock Trapper wants to strike back. Future Arm's got his own pitbulls. I mean, it's a big map. It's a GDI mirror. They're going to build pit bulls. Why wouldn't you build pit bulls? He's going to come in. He's going to attack this tower, unfortunately. You want to put your rockets on the pit bull. Something you can destroy. He's not really focusing too well. Now he's focusing. Gets a pit bull. There's a battle marker down here. Oh, look at this. He might get his own harvester, but no, the machine guns on the harvesters are fighting back. We'll keep an eye on that one. It was just pit bulls for pit bulls, and he does save the harvester. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's so heavily damaged. It may just be worth Shock Trepper sending that for repairs. I mean, he doesn't want to slow his economy down, so he's going to keep it there. But, I mean, just one round from any weapon, and that harvester is going to explode. Pops the War Factory down. Not quite close enough to the refinery, so he's going to have to pull this off the line. What he should do is, when this comes out, he should order it to harvest the Tiberium here. That way it can harvest and repair. He doesn't lose any mining time. While the harvester is in heavy damage mode, it does move slower. So you've got to be aware that it moves slower. Uh, so you will still lose mining. But yeah, both sides settling in here. Nothing too strenuous occurring. I thought I saw a scout down there, but no, it's nothing. We'll clear that foxhole now. Predator tanks, APCs, any airfields coming up. Tier 2 is up, APM on the way. This structure is going to be an airfield from Shock Trapid. Futurama Russian, he's got the Tier 2 out. No airfield down just yet. No building queue. No, there we go. He's got an airfield and he's going for an armory. In my opinion, GDI infantry are the most viable against other GDI infantry. Still hasn't repaired this harvest drop. I mean, come on. <laughs> that that there is going to... A lot of people are going to be looking at that and just like, that's going to pop like a balloon any second now. I mean, even if he goes over a, a bump too quickly, he might explode. So 
luckily there's nothing that dynamic in the game. Uh, looks like he's going to grab the tower as well. This tower, always handy to have this tower later on in the game. It just comes it just comes in handy. I mean, it's in an unusual spot. It seems like it should be in a good spot. It's in an okay spot. But uh, yeah, it's something that people tend to get quite a bit. Uh, EMP spike not capturable as, as much in this one because it is contested. Contested EMP spikes seem to be very uh, unpopular. These guys are going to have a bit of a skirmish in here. But this is a real classic GDI match up here it's just a real classic one we have orcas moving through the back of the base we'll have to keep an eye and see what they're doing i don't think they've got any harvesters we'll keep an eye on this fight here now they are going through to the main we will have to have a quick peek at those ones here they will be getting harvesters there's that harvester there's that harvester and oh my god he needs to get that harvester that harvester is so low oh he's got two harvesters with literally no no health in the hp bar at all Oh man, future armor getting unlucky there. Those and it, this time he pulls harvesters. He pulls the harvesters this time. He, he can't possibly leave those there. Gonna fall back to his base. Maybe a sonic bit on the way. Maybe it's a, no. It's another tower. But the thing is, putting these towers here, they're way out in the open. They're way out in the open. Put them behind the war factory, and they can shoot over the war factory. Impossible to kill. Now he's going to do this death run, and I mean it's not turning out very well for him. Nice orca strike by Compo Armor will deflect most of that. There's another battle marker up there. No, it's nothing serious. We'll keep an eye on here. Battle marker's there. Looks like Hammerheads are raiding his field, but there's a turret there. He's going to lose some of his forces here. Things really heating up. And look at all the dead dead units here. Both sides, and they're both Russian. They just throw units at each other. This is how these guys play. They just throw units at each other. They don't even care. They're just going to throw units. There's so many APM towers. There's three APM towers here. They're actually starting to break through. The Predator are... are there's, uh, there's quite a few of them there. He's going to be losing more harvesters. These hammerheads will find another harvester. He's going to switch targets. Futurama has lost a couple. He's going to lose another one still. That's going to go down. Might want to pull his hammerheads back. These turrets are just garbage versus the... Uh, even against GDI, yeah, they're, just, they're just so bad. You need several of them to actually have any decent coverage. Who came off worse there? So... Let's do a quick harvest count. Oh, Future Armor has double ref, but there's only two harvesters. So keep an eye on that one. So one, two, three, four, five. He's got five and two on this expansion. Does he have anything else? There's one sitting over here. Uh, we have Juggernauts coming out, Marv coming out. More harvesters being pulled. So, I mean, the harvester count is relatively even. The, the, the bad news for Shock Trapper is that Future Armor has a third base up. And he's not able to fully capitalize on it just yet. He's got the refs, but he needs the harvesters. He's pumping out units because I think he's afraid he's going to be attacked. And Shock Trapper knows this is here now. I think, will he take on those guys? No, he's just going to bypass them. He's going to get out of there. Pitbull comes in to have a look around. The Harvester Guns may finish it off. Yeah, those Harvester Guns. When you get enough Harvesters around and you drive in here, these Harvester Guns can actually wear down those light units pretty quickly. Quite surprising. Loses one more Hammerhead. The last one will escape. Very low health. Few pit bulls from Shock Trapper are making their way across. They will find a harvester. No, no focus firing there. Some of them are shooting. One of the pit bulls is shooting at the Predator tank there, so he's not going to get that, unfortunately. He looks like he is just taking his classic expand. Oh man, future armor is here as well, though. This is this is concerning because Shock Trapper is significantly behind. He does have a Marv. Now the Marv is on the left-hand side of the map, though. He put the engineers in the front, which is not good because obviously they don't have as much range. The weapons still have a limited range, even though they're at the back. But um yeah, oh, he's got Sonic emitters, all oh, those harvesters. He's going to have to pull those harvesters. Shock Trapper, what's he going to do? He, is he going to attack? I don't think he can. Still hasn't rectified the harvester issue there, but I don't think he can attack. There's actually another Hammerhead here doing a lot of, uh, somewhat a lot of work. The Compo Armor make, making it difficult, though. Shock Trap is backing up. What's he going to do? He's going to have to go for this base here. I mean, he's he built the Marv and the Juggernauts on the west side. I mean, obviously he didn't know that that future armor was here. He has actually got some units sitting there as well. So Future Armor is at the moment just denying. I mean, he's actually harvesting from the far side. But yeah, Shock Trap is probably going to drive across the map. No, he's actually going to leave his MCV here. He's not going to pursue or push across the map. But I mean, Future Armor must know that he's going to be under siege. And Juggernauts are coming out. He needs a little bit of time. There's four Juggernauts and a Marv. So he's going to need a couple of Juggernauts. He's, oh, he's stalling. That's the thing. There's only three. Oh, there's four Harvesters here now. So Future Armor is still struggling a little bit to get his economy up. He's actually sieging down the, the refinery. You can't see it because the shells are actually going in to the into the, the map there, but they, they still actually damage those units. Both those Sonic Emitters go down. Shockwave Artillery is coming down. It's not going to be on... Oh, he actually kills the Juggernaut as well before the Shockwave hits. He doesn't have anything here. 
Futurama doesn't have anything here. There's a Zone Trooper squad. There's actually two APCs still left. He just doesn't have any money. He's stalling for money. And now these Juggernauts are almost up the ramp. And, I mean, he's just going to destroy this hole. It doesn't even matter if he, can, he can't stop the Marv. He's got so much health on it. He barely was able to touch it. There is a Sonic Emitter there, but I think two volleys, and he's going to lose it. He's not even going to get a Juggernaut. Yeah, look at that. As soon as the Sonic Emitter goes down, the Sonic weapon actually dissipates into nothing so and, and he's just going to move this marv up here these four juggernauts are actually going to do the job they're going to be able to destroy this base here i wouldn't be surprised if the mcv from shock trap is here as well can't see where it is is it still over there yeah it's all the way over there but it doesn't matter because futurama can't defend that base i mean he has an mcv on the bottom right he could have just rebuilt down there and sent his harvesters but i guess he felt that he didn't want to do that um so shock trap but yeah surprisingly i mean that game there not a lot happened in that game it was pretty stock standard GDI fight, nothing special, nothing fancy, but Shock Trapper made the decisions at the end which uh, allowed him to win the game. So he'll take a 1-0 lead in the series. It's going to be a long series because it's the best of eight, or at least I think it's going to be a long series. Game two is coming up right now. Okay, guys, welcome back to game number two in the series between Shock Trapper and Futurama. The battle for Russia is on and we are on fully sick city. It is sick city. Uh, in terms of factions, Shock Trapper is starting in the south this time. He has switched his faction across to Squid Vanilla, and that leaves Futurama Russia with GDI. He's going to stick with GDI. He's not switching from GDI. Futurama playing quite a lot of GDI recently, and I uh, always thought he was more of a nod player, but uh, he is sticking with the GDI, giving GDI some... Uh, oh, actually just managed just to stop that Buzzer Swarm. It was very close. And look at that. There's actually two more Buzzer Swarms here, which means he really intended to actually go up there. That's a bit of a mistake by Shock Trapper. He was obviously scouting forward with one squad, intending to pull it back or at least to deny the structure, but not able to do that. And now he doesn't have enough Buzzers to overrun this area because there is a second squad there. The second squad makes all the difference. He's going to come forward again. He's going to get shot at. And he's going to lose another squad there. That's unfortunate. And the third one. Oh, man. That's really unfortunate. No, he's actually bum-rushing him with these disintegrators here. And he'll finally clear it. But, I mean, they lost quite a few of those buzzers. There is a rifleman squad here. He's just going to fire at these units. There is actually a second squad of disintegrators. This is a heavy descent commitment here from Shock Trapper. And it's going to pay dividends at the start. One APC comes out. A lot of rifles floating around. And he's even continuing to draft. So, he's forcing Future Armor to build quite a lot there's actually only one harvester out at the moment one one refinery is down sorry not refineries <laughs> that's a little bit much one spike is down he spotted the other group and now he knows he's in deep trouble he's like whoa i mean the thing is you can actually hold a group this size if you just reverse your harvesters because the harvesters are faster and the machine guns on the harvesters will gun down the squads and this is the, what i like about um fighting against screen and reaper over traveler because you can fight with the harvesters unfortunately he gets he closes to range and he will take out one of the apcs he's going to try to take out the other one he's not quite going to get it does nice bail there from uh, futurama there he bailed on the other side as well causing maximum damage to the disintegrator squads uh now he does lose an apc some some rifles he loses more mining time he's only on two two harvesters and we have three harvesters from shock trap he's working on his next ref He's working on the next ref, and I mean, his third harvest is coming out for Futurama. Futurama spent heavy. He spent the big bucks trying to stop that, and yes, you know, he, I mean, he still took losses as well. The One of these squads is still, sorry, two of these squads are alive. Now, he's going to destroy the bridge. This is something that screen players tend to do on the map. Now, the reason why he's destroying the bridge is because, you know, he's not traveling. He's not going to do a lot of fast attack. At least he's not planning on it by the looks of it. He destroys the bridgehead, and then this means that um, Futurama, it'll be very difficult for him to send harvesters here um, because the bridge is down. He is going to get that bridge there. The bridge can be repaired with an engineer, but then, you know, you got to put a rack, you got to pay money, you got to get the engineer over there, and the screen players usually, they usually be absolute uh, dicks, and they drop their spike or their, their swarm there when you're about to get it, if they can see it, that is. But yeah, this is going to secure that field, and it's nice as well, because future arm, sorry, Shock Trapper is right here, so he can very easily just go grab and come back. It's very short. It's a short distance for some blue tib for Shock Trapper, and we have uh, five harvesters out now. That fifth harvester going to the blue Tiberium. Futurama's got five harvesters. He's recovered nice. He's going for some rocket PCs. He feels he needs to get on the offensive, but Shock Trapper does have a gunwalker here. He's going to find those disintegrators. Now, the gunwalker is to see what's going on. He's going to spot these APCs, and then I think he could just go for photon cannons. I mean, he, he could go for seeker tanks, of course. It really depends. These are beelining for the base. Now, he hasn't actually 
produced anything. He's just landing now, so this is great. He doesn't have like a harvester under threat or anything because he did a pretty costly open as well. The Gunwalker's going to retreat. These APCs have no chance of actually destroying that um, that drone platform. And he puts, he's actually got a tier two and there's dev tanks coming and it's charged. Oh, that's really bad for Futurama. He can't do anything about that dev. There's a dev and a corruptor there and he even put a portal down, which means he can build, uh, no, he puts a buzzer hive down. Maybe he's worried about the garrisons, but I mean, he's got corruptors. He's going to push this back. This is great. Shot Tropic getting a nice read in this series so far. But yeah. Futurama is holding, he's okay. He does have a ref and two half there. Now, now Shock Trapper is probably about to put a ref down. How many harvests does he have? He's got five. One of them went to the blue tib field. No blue tib taken here for uh, Futurama Russian. He's gonna move across the map. The dev has lost its charge now, so he's actually gonna clear this garrison with the buzzers, even though he's got corruptors there. He could have just done that. There is some armor here. I don't think he can get through that. Not without a charge dev. He needs to charge the dev back up. He could just pull back home. He's forced Futurama to build a lot of, quite a lot of units. Futurama's tech is not coming along at all, I don't believe. Yeah, no AP ammo in sight. This could be a comm center, I think, coming down because it was building quite quickly. Uh, second War Factory. I think Shock Trapper can spot that. Yeah, he knows. He sees a second War Factory, so he knows he's up against Dual War Factory. How's he going to respond to this? He's building more dev tanks, which is fantastic. You charge these devs up, you can just one War Factory. He's even building the extra harvesters he needs, which is really good. Does he have another harvester over there? No, not quite. But uh, yeah. You can one war factory with devs because you don't need because the devs will build up over time and they do so much damage that they can really punch through the GDI armor pretty well. And then that allows him, that frees him up to put down more. He's actually gonna go for a gravity stabilizer. I was gonna say it puts it frees him up for more um it's actually destroying that there, although he's not destroying the far one. Maybe he sees the APCs. He must know that this is down here. He's already got a photon cannon, but there's no dev tanks down here. One is responding. I think he's got a second one coming now. But this is interesting that he got caught out of position here. Buzzer Swarm comes down. He'll get the rocket squads, no worries. Oh, there's a tripod out here. He's got a tech center. Oh, he's going to get the tripod behind the refinery. That's really annoying. It's being repaired up by the war factory as well. And he's going to move forward. He's going to get a crush off. No, he goes for the phase. Goes for the phase. Going to go for the crush. And this is just annoying for GDI to deal with, you know. He even gets a few crush on those tanks. It's like, you could have easily jumped forward and sniped that one. Tripod's going to get more tanks. Oh, my God. But he's phased it. And then it's like, once it's phased, what do you do? You can't do anything but retreat. It's just an annoyance. Maybe you could try to focus some harvesters, but he doesn't really have that much there. There were more tanks coming, but he abandoned the push at that stage. Uh, Devastator Warship is here. I don't think he's going to get that. He might have had better luck actually targeting the Harvesters. These two Dev Tanks just popping these guys. He's trying to get the Devastator. It is being repaired up now. But again, that's going to be the end of these guys here. Might want to just destroy the APC. Yeah. Uh, Buzzer Swarm, sorry, Buzzer Hive comes down. Not going to get that Devastator. Devastators have a lot of health. He will get away. Uh, however, Future Armor, he's got double ref down here now. He has actually got a Rafferman squad there. But yeah, Shock Trap, it did sort of abandon the blue tip field there. Oh my god, where's that harvester going? I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> You've got to watch out there. Make sure these harvesters don't go walkabouts. Uh, Futurama did actually kill a harvester. We saw a dead harvester there. Another harvester is coming in. That's really unfortunate. Shock Trap, not aware that the pathing on his harvesters is going to cost him another harvester. The Devastator Warship is being pushed for. He didn't repair it. Oh my god, he just wants to go. He does get that harvester away. That's quite good, but... Marvin Jug is coming out. That's going to be difficult for the screen player to break into without their support powers. Could heal up the Harvester on the way through. Again, not healing the Devastator. I mean, it's got he's got his shields. Futurama doesn't have an airfield. He's got really nothing that can take that down. There's only two APCs on the field. He could actually siege this base. Tech Center in an interesting spot here. It could be vulnerable. You really want to place it in your expansion where you know you can defend it. Uh, Sonic Emitter comes down on the flank. He's immediately going to move away from that, though. And he's just going to back up. He's got these two devs. No charge on them, unfortunately. The Predator tanks is not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. He heals up the tripod just before it goes down as well. I think, oh, he's going to get it anyway. Nice work there. Corruptors being shot at. There's only two Corruptors. It's not a lot. Uh, Tib down there. Oh, my God. He placed his tech center in an awkward spot as well. Uh, a turret is there. He needs to get that turret. He will get the turret. He's going to back up now. He's in. He's, these two juggernauts are sieging him. Will he get that ref? Oh, he gets the ref. That's nice. That could be important. There is build radius here, though, because he still has the... Um, Still has a tech center. No tungsten shell. We've got an airfield coming down. No airfield. He's trying to pump out his math. He's having a bit of trouble with his economy. He's got quite a number of harvesters here, but you can go three ref on this field. Shock Trapper, meanwhile, he's got harvesters lining up for days. Going to heal up these tripods. Marv is out on the field, so this game here, I think is going to slow down a little bit just while they both catch their breath. 
More tripods. Hexapod on the way as well. We've got a third ref. Mastermind is out. So the Scrin Arsenal is starting to become more and more complete. Whereas the GDI Arsenal is just sitting at Marv Jug. And there's not much of it. Just three juggernauts to his nave. Airfield comes down now. So I think he wants to get out those Firehawks. Always a good unit versus Scrin. And he pulls the Devastator back. What he could do here, he could move to the bottom side of the map and then try to snipe down these refs. That would be extremely difficult for Future Armor to deal with. What I like to do is I like to put Juggernauts here because they can shoot through or over here and destroy the Harvesters. And then it forces the hand of the enemy to come down here where there's a choke, where you've got the mountain, and then you can have a, like a base here. It just gets really awkward for them. Battle marker comes in. Could have been just an orca strike there. I think a lot of the time people use orca strikes just for scouting purposes. So he's just used it to scout the enemy there. Five tripods. Still has a few dev tanks sitting around here. Still hasn't done anything about this uh, blue tip here. This is a bit disappointing here from Shock Trapper because, you know, he's got full control on it. He set that up for himself. But Futurama, are these guys allergic to blue Tiberium? Because no one is attempting to go there. I mean, gather that, yeah, Futurama did get pressured heavily over here. So he's probably not too keen on getting back there. Want to deal with the Hexapod. The Hexapod has a mastermind already get, uh, garrison in front. And here come the Firehawks. Hopefully he's got shards. Hard to say. Oh, no, he does. He's got shards. So shards is done. These Firehawks, do they have missiles? Do they have bombs? Teleports into the... Uh, he teleports right into the Juggernauts. He gets one straight away, and he's going to teleport out of there, almost no doubt. Uh, teleports away. That's very unfortunate. Husk is also destroyed by the splash damage there. Uh, what he needs to do here is that... Uh, I think Future Armor is going to have to push at some point. Uh, I mean... I'm not a big fan of EMP grenades. I mean, this is the only situation where I think you can go EMP grenades, but I still don't like the chances. It's just not reliable. It's not reliable when you deploy. It's expensive. It's slow. Screen have so many easy escapes that is it worth the effort? You might as well just pour more money into Juggernauts. Oh my god, Firehawks are being destroyed. He d does get the tech center, but all the Firehawks are destroyed. Oh... At this stage of the game, where they both have a lot of money, is it worth it? I mean, he's already got a lot of tech units out, which means he probably doesn't need to worry too much. We're going to see this one go to the real late game, so both sides just building up. Planetary Assault Carrier is coming out, which means we have a signal transmitter somewhere. There it is. So you don't see these very often in 1v1 because, I mean, they're, they're good once you get the numbers up, but it's actually going to Gravity Stabilizer plantar assault carries if he gets the numbers up high enough like six plus they become a real problem like they can become extremely difficult to stop but it's just getting to that number and you get you generally see them come out on maps like this where you get a stalemate i mean six city isn't inherent of this type of stalemate i mean only a, a only a portion of games end up like this future army is going for zone heads does he have the uh upgrade no no scanner packs it's unfortunate. You need scanner packs. Trying to rebuild his files as well. Just three zone heads. Again, zone heads are just something that are so good against Scrin, and I never see anyone use them. They, they do require an extreme amount of control and skill and one mistake, and you're basically dead. These two dev tanks, unfortunately, aren't going to be able to do anything against that. He will teleport one of them away. There you go, teleports the dev tank away, saves the dev tank again. That blue tip, oh, he has actually destroyed the bridge, that's why. Oh, both bridges have been destroyed, so that's why. I did not notice that earlier, both bridges were destroyed, which is why that blue tip field's not being taken. Hexapod is here, teleport right in, and is he going to get that juggernaut? That juggernaut's trying to run, I don't think he's going to get it, no, he's going to get it away. And this is the thing, uh, he, he forces that away with no damage. He took no damage then. No damage at all, but this is the problem. Behind the lane, the screen player can literally do whatever they want. Big scan, big scan, tungsten shell better start like yesterday. He doesn't have it. It's not starting. There we go. It starts now. So he's got, to, that's almost certainly tungsten shell. It can't possibly be anything else. The Firehawks will help to pick off the packs on the fringe here, but did he sell off the double A? There is one shard launch there. Shard's so good. And look at that shock trap. It's main field grown so large. He's got a growth accelerator here. So this game here, quite slow now. Things were pretty hot early on. Teleports over here. That spike has been destroyed. Shock trapper holds two spike. Future armor holds one. Tungsten slingshot's coming out now. Battle markers over here. We have it. These own heads. The hexapod is trying to destroy them. Oh my god, this is not what you want to see. He's giving away these zone heads, and that's that's a huge amount of veterancy, by the way. 
an absolutely uh, tremendous amount of veterancy you can give away to the hexapod because each one of those zone heads are valued about $2,800 and you get the kill from both of them. Uh, tried to snipe a planetary assault carrier, but he couldn't do it. Either he stratified it too early, does he not have enough missiles? You should still be able to one-shot it without hard points, I believe. It's one of those things where you don't come up against packs that often that you sometimes you forget the ratios. I'm pretty sure they don't need hard points to one-shot a pack with a shield on it. This hexapod again, this is just going to be annoying. It forces you to send tripods, sorry, not tripods, uh, it forces you to send um, juggernauts away to some random area of the map. Because if you don't, they'll just never leave and they'll just pick apart the backside of your base. It's really frustrating. But yeah, future armor, I can't, I can't help but feel this is slipping. You know, he's got space command and everything, but he sort of needs to make a... Uh, what's he going to do? Yeah, Shock Trapper just is in a... He's just in a much better situation. And I mean, he needs to get this this Tiberium because right now Shock Trapper is sort of getting that. Again, that blue tip. Oh, he did repair. Oh, oh, he gets the drone ship. That's, that's really going to annoy... Shock trap it there that he got his drone platform because he was planning on doing a push. What was that? A storm rider comes in. He even spots the storm rider. Has enough uh, um, rounds left to take that down. Are we going to see a wormhole though? That's the question. He sort of has stopped at four, five, six packs. He's got two devastators. Doesn't quite have as much as I thought he would. He's got units spread out everywhere. He's actually now switching to shock troopers, going for the upgrades. Unfortunately, oh, Future Armor not able to fill up his tanks there. Only get a small fraction of that. And this blue tier field is so healthy. This game here really slow. Oh, the Hexapod is added again. Gets a jug, gets out of there. I can't help but feel that, shock, that uh, Future Armor should have pushed sooner before this got out of control. Slingshots, by the way, are superb at taking down Planetary Assault Carriers. Just got to make sure you, they don't get overwhelmed. You got to watch out because tripods can destroy them extremely quickly as well. You really got to keep them behind your units. They're very fast. You should be able to keep them away. Oh my god, he's going to lose a harvester, unfortunately. Not able to stop that one from going down. Oh, another drone platform, but he teleports in these tripods. That's really annoying. Looks like some firehooks were destroyed, but that's the thing. What's the Marv doing out here? All, all by its lonesome. I mean, it was all by itself, and that's not how you use a Marv. He's now going to move forward because he realizes, I think, all right, the Marv's dead. Just bring the Devastators with you. Not bring the Devastators, not sure why. And now Futurama has to decide whether or not he has time to get another Marv out. If he wants to go for another Marv at all, he might not even have time to get another, another Marv out. No scanner packs, by the way, so no range extension for the Zone Troopers. He is refining down here, and he's got a lot of Shock Troopers. He didn't even bother about Blink Packs. Did he forget it, or did he just decide he didn't need it? Teleports in as well. Gonna get a Juggernaut straight. Oh my god, the other Juggernauts. Oh, two, three Juggernauts. That's really bad. It's really bad. He now has a Veterancy. He's gonna teleport away. There's actually no double A here. And there's double A coming now. And this is gonna be, I think, the last fight of the game. Zone heads are gonna kite. He you can tell that Future Armor doesn't really know how to use these zone heads. We're gonna see a big fight here. Juggernauts are sieging from the top of the map. Those tripods are gonna try to rush forward, but Shock Trap it. Is it just me? I see him just hesitating here. He's sort of just sitting around, isn't he? Some of his units being destroyed. Uh, master, uh, sorry, not Master Leaf. Master Mind is there. These three Juggernauts somehow are still alive. And I think he's going to go forward now. He finally got a drone ship down, so I'm not sure what he's going to do with that. A shard launcher comes down. Oh my god, it's so easy for those shard launchers to just destroy everything that's there. Devastator warships come in. They will try to take that out. I think one of the Devastators is down. Units there, Buzzer Swarm will clean up the husks, but the attack is on here now. The attack is on. And he's got the Iron Storm coming down. The Juggernauts, unfortunately, can't do too much about this. The, the uh, what should we call it, Slingshots are there. I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to get these uh, destroyed. He's actually targeting the ships, which is a the, the, the main planetary body, which is a mistake. That was a mistake. He tried to focus down the ships. The, the, the main, uh, the motherships, you, you want to destroy the, the, the smaller craft first because you can destroy them extremely quickly and then the, then they can't shoot at all. But yeah, this here, Firehawk comes in, will get a kill there. Iron Storm is healing everything up. We can see somehow something's going on up there where he's grabbing these tribal hearts. That was the most cataclysmic, clumsy engage 
from both players. It looked like Shock Trapper wanted to go in, but he sort of stuck his foot in, decided it was too cold, and then sent some units anyway, but not all of them. <laughs> it's just, it was so messy. I, I don't know what to say about that game, but Shock Trapper has a 2-0 lead in the series here. Think what you may. I think we've spent enough time dwelling on that game because it did go for a little while. I mean, only, only 19 minutes, 18 19 minutes, so it's not hugely long, but yeah, it sort of settled into that rhythm. But yeah, at the end of the day, Shock Trevor managed to, to get it done. Future Armor, two passive, two passive Future Armor. But uh, stay tuned, game number three is coming up right now. Hey guys, and welcome to game three between Future Armor, or should I say Shock Trepid versus Future Armor, seeing as how it's Shock Trepid's home game. And we have a another game here for you. So this is going to be Tournament Badlands. Shock Trepid has decided to take us over here on the west side playing as Nod. He has switched it up. He's gone through all three main factions here. He is playing as Nod Vanilla and Futurama is playing as Zolkom, but I believe that so uh <laughs> I believe that Zolkom. I believe that Futurama picked random in this engagement. So he is playing as the Zocom forces. Now this is Tournament Badlands. Tournament Badlands will sort of Took a little bit of a backseat to Torment Highlands for a while because they do basically have the same layout. They're, they're the exact same layout. Highlands is much larger. The middle is much more open and wider. The map is bigger. Of course, it's not perfectly the same, but they basically have the tip fields and the spikes and everything in a relatively similar position. But uh, Badlands was here first and it was the classic one. It was redesigned a few times early in the day. But um, it's been like this in its current iteration for many, many, many years. And it's been very popular throughout its lifetime as well. It's one of those maps that just crops up. Uh, I wouldn't say it's super common, but it, it keeps cropping up. You know, it just keeps cropping up. People still happy to play on it. Highlands unable to kill off this particular map here. But uh, nonetheless, we have a people coming out. Rocket Harvesters always help versus the... Um, Versus the bike attack. Actually, second bike coming in. Not actually paying attention to what's happening in this game. So it will be a bike attack coming in here from Shock Trapper. Two bikes. Just two. Okay, he goes for a Raider Buggy as well. So two bikes and a Raider Buggy. Maybe trying to fake, a, fake an attack here. I'm not 100% sure. Doesn't have to worry about too much about those harvesters because they do not have machine guns on them. But the MCV will run some of those guys over. You think if you're getting run over by something that slow, you'd be able to get out the way. I was playing Mars Leaf the other day and I had Zone Troopers who absolutely refused to get out the way of a, a mammoth tank they just kept moving back into the path of the mammoth tank and uh, it's unbelievably frustrating but anyway all these pitbulls actually follow the um the bikes home and they get both bikes oh my god that's pretty bad from shock trap up there i don't think he was expecting that i don't think he was expecting to be followed home now the harvest comes out that radar buggy that's gonna be hard to kill actually <laughs> with the with the war factory there and i mean the pitbulls will eventually be destroyed i don't think he can chase this for too long he's going to try to chase that pit bull down and the other people is going to come back and he's actually going to lose his raider buggy now i think he's just going to go all in for it he's not going to get it oh my god so he lost two bikes and a raider buggy here now in the early game obviously losing units like that it sort of hurts a bit later on in the game it's basically nothing but at the moment when the eco is low and you have limited funds and economic value losing a small amount of units can hurt a little bit will micro those bikes around there gets the pit bull doesn't lose a bike that's a lot better Oh, he has to abandon his attempt at the Blue Tiberium field as well. He had to turn around. I mean, he has some pit bulls, but I think the other one was still being repaired. No one's going for that one. No, no one's taken a swing at that. Scorpion Tate's coming out from Shock Trapper. He will get another pit bull there. Both those bikes, badly damaged, but they will get away. They both got uh, one missile hit each. These Scorpion Tates will finish off that last pesky pit bull. Rocket squad's coming out now. More pit bulls to fill the void. Predator tanks, though. He's switching it up. Both these guys seem to be, yeah, really mixing up their unit compost quite a bit. They're never sticking with the same one. And Futurama Russian has tried to go for the bottom field. He couldn't get the top one, so he tried to go for the bottom one. And he's only got about 40% of a tank there. And that's just not going to be worth it. It's just not worth it. He's pushed off this one. He's losing some more pit bulls as well. That pit bull probably will get a scout off. He's probably going to be able to run down that bike. So actually, doesn't really doesn't want to lose that bike because he's actually drafting units. He can't stop that pit bull with a militant squad there. And is he going to get away? Oh my god, he sneaks away. He doesn't. He's not going to get away. <laughs> There's the scorpion tank there. Not actually paying too much attention to the radar though. He has sent his scorpion tanks down here. There's two predators and there's a rocket squad inside the foxhole. Takes out that scorpion tank. The other three scorpion tanks may have to bail here. I don't think they can take that out. No, they're not going to be able to take that out. They have to leave. Uh, Futurama blowing out five and two on the expo. 
Only three and two on the main, which means we have, yeah, more harvesters up here, but he's going to find that the blue tip is being taken. There is enough crystal here to fill up his tank, but this harvester sort of needs to get away for Shock Trepper, and I don't think it's going to. I think he's going to commit. He's going to commit both these pipples, and he's going to get it. Oh, maybe if he can take one of these down right now. He gets one people. No, there's more people who's coming, so it doesn't matter. He's going to get this harvester no matter what. Unfortunately, though, he's going to lose most of his pitbulls, if not all of them. Oh, my God, he may just get them all. One more hit on that one. I think he's going to try to push forward to take out future Rama's harvest. He gets all the pitbulls, so actually this is becoming a little bit expensive here for um, future Rama. If he loses the harvest, it's actually going to turn, completely turn the tables. There's nothing here to stop this as well. These Scorpion tanks, they'll come in and they'll take that harvester. It's full of blue Tiberium, so no blue, uh, blue Tiberium for future Rama. He does get it, and now he can engage the pitbulls. Scorpions in numbers will obviously easily beat pitbulls. Is I mean, he retreated back. He could have tried to focus some of these pitbulls down. I reckon he could have won that engagement. Double airfield hammerheads coming out with Ceramicama. He already got Ceramicama. APMO, of course, done. He's got Dozer Blades. Might be bringing out maybe some Venoms. No, he's got... Yeah, oh, look at that. I was going to say, maybe some Venoms. And he's already built... He's got five Venoms. He's almost up to half a dozen Venoms. And if he goes for a tech center... Look at that. There's actually some Rocket Squads here. The Venoms are going to avoid them. And uh, he might actually need to pull those Venoms back. I think he needs those Venoms here. There's actually not a lot on the ground here. There's no tanks here uh, to defend against this. The Venoms are going in. He's going to try to focus these guys down. But he's sitting right under the pit bulls, like, or right above the pit bulls. This doesn't make a lot of sense. He should have fought from back behind here. Where are his tanks? He has no tanks here. Shock Trapper, his harvesters are now being absolutely raided here. There's no tanks to speak of. He tried to go for a tech center because you can see he wanted laser capacitors, but he's not going to get there because all of his harvesters are being destroyed. This laser, laser turret will try and fight. No Venoms left. His Venoms is getting completely destroyed. There's no double A now. And again, he just destro he destroys every single harvester and then he turns around and he's going to go to the main. He's not even going to bother staying there. No, he's going to turn around actually. Maybe he wants to take out the air tower. Not 100% sure. No, he's going to back off this turret there now. He can just move outside the range there. That was devastating effective i think that's it i think that may be it for shock trap it there's two flame tanks down here these could have saved him if they did some damage but they're not going to do any damage unfortunately um no it doesn't look like anything got in in terms of flame tanks and that's it shock trapper i mean he tapped out because he just lost all of it he would have had like two harvests maybe or three harvests left he just got completely destroyed by that attack that was unfortunate he got dozer blades and there didn't seem to be any tanks around you know, if he had some tanks, he would have been fine, but because he had enough venoms to shoot down the um, the hammerheads, even without laser capacitors. But yeah, Futurama just jumped him. He took it out, 61,000, 74,000. Futurama had quite a bit more money, despite the failed attempts at the Blue Tiberium field there. Interesting shock trap, but not able to get his economy down as well in that game. So Futurama will bring it back. He uh, doesn't tie the series up, uh, so Shock Trap at least 2-1, but Futurama is on the board. Can he bring things back? This is a best of eight. Game four is coming up right now. Okay, guys, welcome back to game number four between Shock Trepet and Futurama Russian in their series. You're watching Champions League game of the week, and we have a series on our hands here. Futurama Russian in the top north side playing as Screen V, Screen Vanilla, and our home ground player, Shock Trepet. Let's hear it for Shock Trepet playing as GDI. He's taken us now to tournament Los Angeles, tournament LA. Let's see how this one goes. GDI versus Screen. Is it just me? Is Shock Trapper just cycling around <laughs> all the factions here? Because he went GDI, then Screen, then Nod, and now he's back to GDI again. Staying away from the sub factions, I see. Look at this. He's pulling this rifleman squad back here from his main because he's worried about disintegrators. Yeah, saying that he thinks there's going to be some disintegrators coming around. Now, we know, just looking at the radar, there are no disintegrators. But in my opinion, as GDI, you don't need to throw away a unit getting into the screen base. I mean, if they're going to rush you, it's going to be devs or disintegrators or something along those lines. And the biggest threat is the disintegrators, I think. So there's no need to throw away your rifles. You're just going to re-scout this area here again. Especially if you scout an area, move back, and then something moves into the vision. You can see it, but he can't see you. So he doesn't know he's been spotted. Going to find these buzzer swarms. Look at that. He's going to cut these buzzer swarms off. He's, he's playing mind games. Future Arm Russian, not able to get the scout off. He, I mean, GDI has some very powerful uh, rushes, especially all-in rushes. So not scouting them in a tournament situation. What's happening over here? Two power plant going into the expo. 
Whoa, that was his third harvest to go into the blue tip. Oh, he's sending two. No, this is a mistake. There we, oh, there we go. Thankfully, Future Armor fixes that, but he was sending just his third harvester. He's on four now to the blue tip field. It's so fast. I just don't think it's worth it. You stall out your build. I just don't think it's worth getting it that early. He's not even going to get a full load of blue Tiberium. All he's doing is denying Shock Trapper, and Shock Trapper knows it's there. So Shock Trapper knows he doesn't need to go there. Look at that, he's only going to get half a tank. And half a tank is only 1,300 Tiberium. It's not even as much as getting green tib. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's got maybe just over half. We'll clear that garrison. Nice work there. One Seeker tank coming down. And again, he sent an early harvester there with Seeker tanks. More Seeker tanks coming up to five harvesters. And look at this, Rocket PCs coming out. And they're really good at deflecting this type of screen harass. He knows he can defle deflect those Seeker tanks. So Seeker tanks won't like the Rocket PCs because the Rockets, of course, can focus them down. The APCs can be not super hard to crack, but, of course, they're fast enough. They can re-maneuver. He's actually sending them to the, to the enemy base, and these Seeker tanks are going to come down here. He needs to move more of his APCs perhaps over here. Perhaps he's going for Predators. I don't know. He could call in the Repair Drones. He's going to come in and try to focus down that Harvester. He's just going to go for it. Oh, my God. He might actually get this. Meanwhile, this attack is sort of going on here. Shock Trapper is busy. Oh, he's going to lose a Harvester. Oh, my God. I'm not sure if that was the Blue Tib Harvester. If it was, that would have been devastating. Meanwhile, has to pull his Harvesters off the line. There's a lot of Seeker tanks. There's four Seeker tanks here. He's going to lose one of his own harvesters. Shock Trapper not attempting to defend that. We'll lose an APC. Probably going to lose a second one here. But again, one dead harvester. Not able to protect his own harvesters. He needs to get behind the War Factory. Oh my god, he gets that one forward. No, get it behind the War Factory. Oh, this is devastating. He's going to lose two harvesters. No, that's not good at all. Future Armor looking at maybe starting to edge this back. There's only two harvesters on this field. He's got two on the Expo. But look at this. It's a double ref here. Three harvesters. Oh, he's only got three on his main as well. So I guess it's not too bad. Calm down, GZ. Everyone's like, cool your jets. Shock Trap, it's still okay. I can't help but feel he could have handled that attack better. He knew those Seeker tanks were there, by the way, for a long time, and he didn't do anything about it. And he's going to clean up the Gunwalkers, unfortunately. Just sort of donating those Gunwalkers. Will box out the Rocket Squad as well, just for added pain. He's going to kill it anyway, but that Gunwalker will be destroyed. No other option but to be destroyed. Disintegrator's coming out, which means he's worried he's going to probably get overrun. Doesn't really need to worry about that. There's only one APC, one Predator tank. Probably didn't need to commit that heavily. The APC, he's going to push them back nonetheless. I mean, Future Armor's echoing pretty hard. I think he's going for a tech center here. This could be a tech coming down. No, it's a double gravity stabilizer storm, but I'm not worried about Firehawks in the slightest. Tier 2 is down. No Tier 3. Got a structure cube. What could this be? It's an airfield. Both sides not worrying too much about trying to get down the tech tree just yet. Their Ecos probably aren't where they want them to be. Big Scout coming off here. 5 and 2 on the Expo here for Future Armor Russian. Not looking too bad for Future Armor Russian. Shock Trapper has sort of put his economy back together, though, after that early harass there. Only 3 on the main. Blue Tibfield starting to come good again. He will spot these Disintegrators out to the left. So they're going to be destroyed. Getting a Scout off meanwhile. Could take that garrison. Be very annoying. This Gunwalker could finish off that squad. Unfortunately, they are destroyed. Getting in the garrisons is very important. Denying the enemy. The opportunity to get rid of the scout. Unfortunately, that, those, that hammerhead there will clean everything up. Pred APC, it's the name of the game. We got rocket heads coming out as well. APM just about to complete. There we go, just as we said that. Engineer comes out. That could be for the EMP spike. I'm not 100% sure. You do have both of them in the corner. It's not contested. I was talking about this on Odyssey. On Odyssey, you have contested EMP spikes. Or EMP spike, should I say? There's only one. But on this one here, it's not contested. Oh my god, the Storm Riders are here. He's launched without getting all eight. He's got five. He gets a harvester straight away. Trying to get the turrets out. Doesn't have any money for it. Trying to get the rocket squads over here. There's nothing in those hammerheads. Those hammerheads are going to get shot up. He's going to try to focus. Oh, look at that. Scatter move. Nice scatter move. He will get them all, but there's only two rocket squads left. Oh my god, this is disastrous. He's been jumped. Storm Riders, if, they, if you can jump an enemy with Storm Riders, you can end the game pretty quickly here. Those Seeker tanks should just bypass the turret. And just go in for the kill. There's only two harvesters remaining. And Shock Trapper just doesn't have anything. He's got nothing on the radar either. There's nothing going for him right now. I'm not sure if he's gone for a tech center or what. But, I mean, he'll eventually clean up these Seeker tanks. But that harvester pretty badly damaged. Something is happening. There's some units over here. But he's up against double tripod. That's the end of the game. 
Oh, unfortunately, Shot Trapper there just getting donked at the end. So, yeah, di he didn't really have a clear, concise thing going. I mean, the Rocket Heads would have been nice, but against the tripods, but I mean, he got jumped by them storms. And that's really, yeah, I think Future Armor was ahead. If we look at the resources, yeah, a little bit ahead there, surprisingly. Uh, Shock Trapper did well with the APC Rocket, but he sort of persisted for too long and wasted a bit too much money. But uh, yeah, Futurama brings it back. We've got a 2-2 series on our hands here, so stay tuned. Game number five is coming up right now. Okay, guys, welcome to game number five. Shock Trap at V, Futurama. We are on Tournament Highlands here. That's a nice-looking forest. If you zoom in, it's, it's quite nice, isn't it? That would be a nice place to visit. Anyway, <laughs> Uh, Shock Trapper has brought us to Haunt Tournament Highlands. Played Tournament Badlands, now on Highlands. And speaking of the man, Shock Trapper is here playing as GDI. That's right, he's going to be GDI. Sticking with GDI on the right hand side. Futurama sticking with the screen that is vanilla flavored, not chocolate or raspberry, vanilla. Uh, I guess he felt that, you know, that last game went pretty well for him. He, he seemed to have just get a very, very comfortable victory. And, I can't blame him for wanting to perhaps stay with this faction here. But uh, Futurama is going for these Disintegrator squads. It's the only Disintegrators he has. He's going to force fire them to bolt them up. He's got quite a few squads there. Actually, there's only five squads there. So uh, they are going to go down the middle now. Futurama is going to bypass the scout here. So I don't think he's going to spot them. He's going to th Is he going to thread the needle? Enemy nah, he can, sp he can see them. He can see them, so they're crossing the vision now. Futurama doesn't know he's spotted, but I don't think Futurama's planning on going for the enemy base. You generally don't go for the base with slow descents because they can defend it out pretty easily because they're slow descents, but he's going for this here. Now, the reason why he's going here because he has two swarms with him as well. These swarms are designed to clear the garrison. Oh, look at that. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. He's going to try to go for that squad there. It's not going to work, though. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough. He's actually got two more squads here. Okay. Oh, three more squads here. Future uh, Shark Trapper doesn't want to give this up. He could now take the garrison with impunity and take out that last buzzer swarm. And unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get that spike. I don't think he's going to get, he's going to be able to get it. I mean, oh, he's the building block is real here. The building block is real. Will Shock Trapper get out of the building, though? He is going to get out of the building. He's going to try to duke this out. He can always jump back into the building. I think he's going to try to jump back. Yeah, he does now. He's got another squad on the other side, and now they're getting shot up from both directions. This is all over. It is all over. Future Arm didn't even attempt to recover that situation there. No repair tool down on the spike, though. Yeah, no repair tool at all. He's, he didn't even try to counter-repair that, so he almost lost. He's going to leave it in a pretty dire situation. I guess he prefers to have the income. Uh, the spike can actually generate more income than it costs to repair it, so you can technically self-sufficiently repair a spike but i mean it's still taking money away from your economy but shock trapper he holds that spike he obviously spent extra in in rifleman squads so you got to keep that in mind uh oh seek is coming out pretty early on and he's taking the blue tiberium field shock trapper will spot this now shock trapper went for the top field i believe yeah so he's not actually going to cross paths with um with Futurama. Some more disintegrators are going to come out to try to perhaps deny this this harvest, but I mean the harvest has a machine gun on it. It will be able to defend itself against a small group of disintegrators. Repairing the spike now, you can see all the bits go whoop and they, they jump back up off the ground and repair, which is quite interesting how the game does that or how the animations work there. Uh, two towers here. He's going to try to bypass the tower. Another tower is going to come up here. He's going to try to clear that garrison. He will clear the garrison because he took two buzzers with him. That was smart as well from Futurama now. The Seekers ultimately just went too deep then, and these towers are really cost-effective. I mean, the towers obviously won't destroy them super quick or anything like that. APC comes here as well, so probably didn't even need the APC. The Harvester can escape. He's going to find these uh, Disintegrator Squad. He's going to reverse move right outside the range. Oh, that's really unfortunate there for Futurama. Not able to get any type of jump on those guys, so once again, Shock Trapper holds that spike. No units lost there this time. Did have to send two APCs up there. We'll get that Harvester back to base. One ref down, one ref down as well. Futurama Russian. Not sure what he's got in store next. Doesn't have a tier two or anything like that. So he's still just rocking this low tier. I mean, he spent a lot on units as well. Got those Seeker tanks out. He got more Disintegrators out. So must have been a tier two. Yeah, it was a tier two that time. Uh, airfield is out. APM on the way. I think we got Hammerheads coming down from Shock Trapper here. I don't believe he attempted that. No, he didn't go back to the blue tip field. Not worth it yet. He's going to see here with these APCs and force out this buzzer swarm. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's going to recall these back to base. So things just settling down a bit here now. They're just settling just a little bit. Gunwalkers are coming out, so maybe he's concerned about something. 
There should have been at least some Seeker tanks left. Did he lose all of his Seeker tanks? He only had about five or six, but still. It's unfortunate. Two assimilators. Wow, he really wants them. He really wants those spikes. Now, instead of destroying them, he now finds himself going to capture them. He will take Blue Tip off the bottom now. Is Shock Trapper going to attempt to stop that? We have one APC, no rockets. More APCs responding. He's going to spot this line of armor moving down. Will he spot the hammerheads? It's double airfield. He's really struggling to pump that out, but he's got a tech center as well. I don't know what this build is here from Shock Trapper. He's gone very heavy on units here, and, and he, he's really pushing his economy quite hard. I think... Oh, no, he's going for Stratify. Yeah, he's got Stratified. I was going to say, those Hammerheads should have stayed there and destroyed that. We'll be engaging some forces over there. Hammerheads are there. Those Assimilators will have to stop. I don't think he realizes they're there yet. Seeker Tank's moving through this tank line here. So Future Armor is not actually doing a very good job of dealing with this. I mean, Shock Trapper is trying to push his economy in every which situation. Both the Assimilators are sniped down there, not able to deal with that. Battle markers over here. More Seeker Tanks coming in. I think he's just going to stratify her out. Wrath from the squad actually gets a kill there. No, he's got one on the deck. He needs to get that one off right now. He needs to get these guys. Do not drop your bombs. Oh my god, if he drops bombs, he's going to be disappointed. No, he's going to fly out of there. Still, tripods are on their way out. He's probably working on shards. Oh, he's got a storm column. Always a good idea to have the storm column there. No upgrades on the way, by the way. For future armor Russian. Has found this one tripod. He's just going to run away. It's really difficult when that tripod moves away like that because he can shoot behind him. He can, just like he's waving goodbye as he destroys everything behind him. Now, where are these firehawks going? Yeah, this is the problem. Those firehawks were already badly damaged. I'm not sure where he rallied them to. They are here. You can see they're pretty badly damaged. I think he's going to have to just bomb something else here. And another a plasma missile turret comes down. He's going to fly in range. That's going to get a kill, maybe. Oh, my God. So close. He might just have to bomb the, the war factory. Good idea. Oh, bombs the ground. Very nicely done. Nothing lost there. Very nicely done. Two kills, one strike. That's the best he could have hoped for, and he didn't lose anything that time. So that was well done. Managed to get his second ref down. Going for a Marv. I probably wouldn't have gone for a Marv in this situation because, I mean, he's not. He's going to have so many tripods. It's like, well, he's just going to stasis an EMP. You might as well go for something else you can use, like zone heads or, or infantry or something like that. Going straight for a Marv. He's trying to pump out the Marv Jug combo, but I don't think he has enough eco up. He's only got five. He, realistically, he's only got five and two on the expansion here. I mean, he hasn't got anything else going for him. No blue tip by the looks of it. I think Futurama is the one who's been taking most of the blue tip. Holds both his spikes. This spike was, of course, destroyed, so Futurama finds himself without a spike. But Futurama is going to have quite a few tripods. He's now working on an upgrade. Not sure what it is. Big scan comes down. Probably going to look to bomb maybe a refinery. No, he's going to go for a gravity stabilizer. The AA turrets are placed in a pretty good location. <laughs> Those ones are way too close. Doesn't need them that close together. You want to spread them out so you can cover as much area as possible. Mechapede is there, but you know what? He can probably just focus that down. He has got fully upgraded zone troopers. This is something that I've been using. Oh my god, there's the end of them. This is something that I've been using against Scrin, and even to the extent to an extent against Nod. Um, I just find, yeah, just using fully upgraded zone troopers, they're quite good, and no one expects them. And oh my god, he's gonna find the firehawks on the deck. He needs to destroy this mechapede right now. He needs to destroy the mechapede right now. Oh, he does get it. Lucky there. Didn't look like he was actually on target. Uh, now this does give uh, increases hit points, so it actually makes it gives them more health and makes them more buff, and then uh, it also heals them when they're idle. And I believe when they're moving, that still counts as idle. They don't actually have to be standing still to heal. I don't believe um, something I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. They the only time they don't heal is when they're obviously shooting or they're being shot at. Here comes the tripod army. He does have... Now, he's, he's sort of a bit lackluster on the tripods because his warp spheres were being bombed. Now, this is something you can do if you can't get a tech center. Bomb the warp spheres. Um, Future armor is going to have a ton of cash, though. That's the thing. He'll have a lot of money. He's going to go in and bomb that. He'll stratify it out. He won't lose anything. He'll get the other one, and that's annoying. Oh, his power grid is in tatters. Two fully upgraded reactors. He's got another one here you can upgrade. Yeah, he's quickly trying to replace this as fast as possible. Trying to get his hexapod out. It's about to pop. It will pop. He's got the shock troopers ready to go. Not planning on selling the warp chasm by the... Or warp chasm. <laughs> I don't know I said chasm. It's just fun to say chasm. Chasm. EMP grenades, is that done? Always forget what EMP grenades looks like. No, that's not EMP grenades. That is power packs. Doesn't have compo armor. Maybe working on zone heads. Maybe just... I think he's seen me do this. I don't know. But yeah, you can actually run. You can run... There's actually some units up here. You can run Zone Trooper Juggernaut, and it works stupendously well against 
screen. They have a really hard time with it. <laughs> it's very difficult for them to counter that. And then you, you mix in some zone heads on top and all of a sudden the screen really struggles to engage that because you wait for the stasis or the phase and you just keep your zone heads behind the combat. What's happening over here? He's probably seeing it. You keep the zone heads behind the combat and that way once the stasis goes off, you can move the zone heads into position to, to, to cover your units as you get behind the stasis and then once the stasis wears off, all your forces are still intact. Very difficult for screen to deal with. Something that I've seen them have a lot of trouble with. Marv is out. He's avoiding Marvising the field here. He's trying to siege this base. He's putting some damage down. No shards done. Oh, there's the stasis. Where are the zone troopers? Does he know there's a lot of zone troopers? There's actually no anti-infantry here. Unfortunately, these juggernauts were not pulled back at all. And I think he's getting... Oh, he's actually going to get one of them away. Are you serious? One of them gets away huge shockwave by the way that is a massive shockwave and all these zone troopers coming in now this is nuts he was not expecting that he doesn't have any anti-infantry we can expect a buzzer swarm but i mean there's so many zone troopers here and the juggernauts from the back he doesn't even fight that's the thing he had no answer for that he just had nothing for that there and yeah you can deploy zone troopers fully upgraded on the ground versus screen these days and i've been it's been wildly successful you know, I mean, I'm sure they'll figure something out to counter it someday, but they can use things like Devastators. They're difficult to deal with and air because there's no air counter. But uh, yeah, I just find it's a good combo. It is a late game combo, so you can't just like rush it or anything like that. It is something you develop later on, but yeah, it's really good. It's quite a good strategy. And, and Shock Trapper, he regains the lead. So he had a 2-0 advantage. Future Armor brought it back 2-2, but now we have a 3-2 lead. Future Armor regains the lead. Can he carry it on? Best of eight. Game number six is coming up right now. Okay, guys, welcome to game number six. Shock Trepid versus Future Armor. You know the deal by now. It is a best of eight series in the Champions League. Both guys looking for their first victory. I mean, it's round one, so someone's got to win or draw. That's a nice construction yard uh, or construction zone there. Anyway, we're on Atacama Road here. And uh, we have Futurama in the top. Sorry, no, 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 Shock Trapper is in the top north side. He switched to Screen. He has switched to Sneaky Sneaky Screen. And Futurama Russian is in the south side. He is playing as also Screen, sticking with Screen there. So I don't think. Actually, no, sorry, he's playing as random. So that's why he is Screen. So he's not picking it by choice. He's going random, and that's his choice. The thing about people, if, if people complain about picking random, they're getting a faction they don't like, or getting the same faction over and over again. Not really something you can complain about. Buzzer v. Buzzer there. Looks like Future Armor comes out on top. What is that in the corner? That is actually a little island there. I was looking at that on the radar. It is actually a small island. Screen mirrors. Don't like them very much. Uh, a lot of people say GDI mirrors are boring. I think screen mirrors aren't particularly exciting. I mean, they can be, but um, a lot of the time it comes down to really, really heavy hitting, heavy punching units, and someone takes a decisive battle at some point. It's never usually like a slow burn or anything like that or a constant aggression. It's more of like, I'm going to take a, a distinct um, advantage in a particular battle. Is he going to try to crawl to the expansion? It's a little bit too far. I mean, nerve center. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. No, he's going to move. He's going to move. Shock Trap is on his way. Future Armor's on his way as well. He's moving the Hubble. But we have nothing but Harvest is coming out. So just your standard eco build here. Nothing fancy. Quite a number of uh, buzzers sitting around for the Shocky. But uh, he has both his spikes. Of course, you have two spikes that are relatively close to each other on this map. So very easy to secure those. No reason why you shouldn't be able to secure those. More buzzers going down there. Looks like Future Armor once again comes out ahead in the buzzer ward there. We'll spot the Expo coming down. Nothing to stop his buzzer from just ripping through this base and destroying all the buildings because that's what buzzers do. No, they do sniper damage, so they will literally never kill a structure ever. But uh, again, Futurama, he is just a champ at winning the buzzer v. Buzzer. Buzz, buzz, buzz. How do buzzers even fight each other? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, he will lose this uh, buzzer swarm, unfortunately, to this Seeker Tank. Not intentionally. It looks like both sides didn't even care about any micro there. Seeker Tank's coming out. Blue tip field is being taken. Look, he could just go over here and grab this extra... There's two crystals there. Shocky. Oh, he's not going to do it. He's going to back up. He's going to move across to his expansion there. Turns that harvester around because he's about to drop a refinery. So he obviously wants his harvester to stay there. And he's going to uh, dock in there straight away. 
Uh, three Seeker tanks, nothing nothing sus. One Gunwalker out, which means Future Armor just wants to take a peek. Dev tanks are coming out. He went tier two. He's gone Dev tanks. Oh my god, he just dropped a tier three. So these two Dev tanks are basically just for defensive purposes. And uh, I mean, can he get one more shot off on that Seeker? No, he's not going to get another shot off. But Shock Trepid needs to be able to read this. He might just be thinking he's going to continue to push this type of tech, um, not realizing maybe it's tier three. He's got his own tier 2 down there. He's building. Looks like it's going to be something uh, quite extensive. Let's have a quick peek. Yeah, he's going for his own Texas. He's floating $6,500. He's just not building anything. <laughs> that, that's the thing. He's he's going right for tripods here. He is just going straight for tripods. These disintegrator squads will fire these uh, Seeker tanks. Can they get some shots off? Not quite. No, they're going to sneak around. That's annoying. These guys could just cross the T and go down there. Oh, Buzzer Swarm comes in. Very annoying. And Future Armor is going to find it to be a bit frustrating. There is a Mechapede here, and these Dev Tanks did cross the map. Do we have a Charge Dev? Oh, no Charge on that Dev. That's unfortunate. He's against two enemy Devs, and he will lose that straight away. That Mechapede, second Mechapede comes in. Shock Trapper is in a lot of trouble down here. What's happening down here? Seeker Tanks are there. I don't think they can really achieve that much once the Disintegrators get going. But, oh my god, he had to abandon his expansion. He's trying to get a Storm Column down, not focusing the head... Shock trap, but unfortunately there, yeah, no, there's only there's only a couple of seeker tanks here, and these disintegrators will eventually deal with them. But meanwhile, he's now firing at harvesters. No, he gets one of the dev tanks. He's got three mechas here. He's going to try to go in to snipe the mechas. He will get the mecha. He still has a dev tank. He could try to move that dev tank forward. He could try to move it forward to recharge that. I mean, Shock Trap is in a lot of trouble here. There's the storm column. He desperately needed that, by the way. There are so many, there are so many mechas here. I think this one's got. I think this one. I think he's going to lose this one. I don't think he can survive this one here. Yeah, Shock, uh, Future Armor now has an expansion down. What's Shock Trapper going to do? He's going to lose his reactor. It's fully upgraded. There's a tripod there. He's got five harvesters. I mean, he hasn't. He's losing harvests, but he's still got five. You've got to remember, Future Armor needs to set up his economy, but these mechas here just being very annoying. Another Storm Column is going to come down, though. You can see he's getting ready to drop another one. Might need a Power Micro in order to do so. Tripod is there getting some headshots on. He might be able to pop that first mecha. He will pop the first mecha. And uh, the Storm Column comes down. Might just want to target the Dev Tank, try to quickly take that out. The Tripod can deal with those Mechapedes. He's trying to focus the, re the Refinery down, and he gets it. And that's important, because that means Shock Trapper can't actually do anything with this field except Long Range Mine. Meanwhile, Future Armor has one ref down. <clears throat> I think this is going to be a second ref. If it's a second ref, oh man, he's going to be in such a good position. A lot of blue tip growing back there, though. So Shock Trapper has two Tripods, but he doesn't have enough money for upgrades. He's really struggling here. He needs to get his refineries down. Um, he's building his own tripods. He's going for the, the force field generators almost certainly. And he has an expansion up. Four harvesters. Five. He's only got five harvesters in total. So, I don't know. Are they his? Are they yellow? Yeah, he does. He's got two harvesters in the middle. There is a tripod there. He's going to need to back off. He's going to need to back off. This tripod's going to get that harvester. Oh, I don't think he's going to get that away. No, I think it's going to be too much for him. Disintegrator squads are responding, but it's only one squad. He's going to lose that harvester. Oh my god, it's going to be tight. He does get it. That's a big loss. It was full of blue Tiberium. Battle markers over here. Another uh, Mechapede comes in, but there's a tripod there. He's not going to get too far with that. Mechapede's coming out by Shock Trap. He blew his own Mechapede. These two reactors, super vulnerable. Both have the upgrade on them. You can see there the little spikes indicate the upgrade on the uh, reactor, just in case you didn't know that. All the um, They all have a... Um, what are you McCall? Oh, look at that. Look at that terraining there. Good good job, Technique. Yeah. I think Technique made this mount. I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, these Disintegrators will crush both the enemy spikes here. Now, that's nice for Future Armor, denying this spike here. Buzzer Swarm comes in. He couldn't Buzzer Swarm directly on the Disintegrators, and he will kill them all, but not before they achieve their, their objective. And that means he's two spike down. Future Armor getting this passive income. Going to be very nice for him. Mechas versus Mechas. He will snipe that down because it's 3v1. Not really much of a chance to win that. Force Field Generators has done three, four tripods. Rebuilding his own mechas. Split between mechas and tripods here. We'll have to back out with his own mechas. They should be able to get away, but I think Shock Trap is going to have to realize that he's going to need more tripods. Actually, almost takes out a tripod. That was tight. Can't believe he got so low on that one. So Shock Trap has actually done a pretty good job of getting back in this. He's got two ref down. Where's his MC? He's actually moved his drone as well. So somehow there is some damage on these tripods. Something must have been happening on the east side. We weren't watching quite a number of Mechapedes here. Uh, the level is okay for Mechapedes. Not amazing, but you know, still, still not too bad. He's going to come down here. There's actually nothing here at all but a drone ship. 
He's going to be pulling those guys there. These two tripods going down to return the favor of destroying these spikes. He has found the MCB completely undefended, but can he really hope to actually snipe that down? It's got so much health. He's taken hull damage. Uh, Shock trap at mage after yeah. He's, he realizes he's not going to be able to do that. All these mechas are here now. He puts quite a bit of hull damage on there. Now he's just going to back off. He's going to get out of there. 3, 4, 5. It's 5v5, I believe. Oh, my God. Nice snipe there. Gets in range and snipes the head down. Shock Trapper turns around. He's like, hey, hang on a second. Let me have a go at you. That's not going to work. He clearly doesn't have the numbers to do that. And he is going to retreat back to his main. One spike was destroyed. The other one still stands. Future Armor not doing too badly. The blue tip very hard to secure. I believe Future Armor's only gained one harvest alone. Interesting, only four harvesters on this base. I think perhaps Futurama has forgotten that he hasn't saturated his bases enough yet because Shock Trap has harvested more of his field. He's harvested more of his expansion. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Futurama put his economy together too well in the later stages of this game. What's with all the disintegrators? There's a big, big bunch of disintegrators here from both players just sort of Attacking each other. I guess he wants to go destroy the other spike, which he probably will be able to do at some stage. Mecha's moving through the middle of the map. There's nothing here, though. There is some tripods over here. Not able to get any repairs, though. Interesting enough, he doesn't have force field generators. Now, that's sort of important. Oh, that lightning spike, the storm column, sorry, is in a really awkward spot for future armor. He doesn't want that there. That completely locks off this area. Just not worth going in there. Having trouble. He's got a ref down. There's nothing here to defend. He's got the mechas coming. He's going to have to pull the harvesters if he wants to save them. If he pulls them right now, he can save them, but he's not going to do so. These mechas will get a harvest to kill. Is he going to go for another one? No, he's going to try to escape. I'm not sure if he can do that yet. Future Armor now actually able to get them. Three mechas for one harvest. It may not have been worth it. He gets his own mecha. Two mechas down. There we go. That was a bit of lucky for him as well. What's happening back here? We have disintegrators moving through this base. This one disintegrator squad just killing off the squads himself. He might get a reactor. He will get the reactor. Sends him into low power mode. That can sometimes scare people when that happens. They realize their base is under attack. One mecha here trying to get behind... The war factory he's gonna have to run i don't think he's gonna be able to stay there is there anything else coming hopefully a tripod or something comes out of there that's a really awkward dance that these guys are doing there is a tripod here now i don't think future arms gonna get it oh my god he actually managed to save it should focus the head gets the head there we go and it's gonna be mecha v mecha he's got a veteran mecha so he has a slight advantage in chasing this one not gonna do so gonna back off two ref here only three harvesters again future armor i think he in this game he's just forgotten he hasn't saturated his fields uh, Shock Trap has only got four on this expo as well. But nonetheless, all the spikes have been destroyed. Nobody likes spikes today. And Force Field Generators is now complete. Future Armor is going to be aware there are tripods heading down there. Had to build some Shock Troopers, but he doesn't have the upgrade. Without the upgrade, they're particularly weak. They're, they're, they're really garbage without their disc launchers. Without their disc launchers, they really can't do anything. They barely scratch armor. But once they have their disc launchers, it's a different story. He's going to find one harvest here with his last mecha. Will he phase or teleport? Not 100% sure. This is definitely an interesting screen mirror. Will phase it. And harvesters, of course, have the advantage of being able to continue to harvest and refine while phased. One mecha over here just short of cleaning up the infantry that was defending this field. This mecha will respond. Mecha v mecha, but this mecha is full health and it is a veteran, so I'm expecting it to win. And he will win. Easy clap there. War Factory comes down. Can, he might be able to snipe that mecha Peter. Got a little bit too close there for comfort. Looks like Shock Trapper did retreat on the east side as well. Didn't actually want to go too deep into the field again. We do have the uh, plasma disc launchers completed. Not going for blink packs. So uh, it's, something, it's, an, it's an upgrade that's so cheap. It's 500 bucks in 15 seconds. It's just one of the things that you should just get. Because you're going to use it when, when you're in combat. I mean, seriously, you are going to use it. Shock Trapper is now securing the blue tip field. This is going to be massive for him. He's getting up quite a number of tripods. Future Arm also has split some of his tripods into different areas of the map, whereas Shock Trapper is really balling them all together in one location. Actually, no, sorry, he's got a couple up here. It just looks like that because he's got more tripods here. A couple of Gunwalkers shown in, uh, thrown in, doesn't want to get overrun by Disintegrators or anything like that. Sold off the Storm Column. Gunwalker comes down here, we'll be able to take these guys out. Shock Trapper is going to make a move down here. Still didn't get that other upgrade. going to be tripod v tripod here now this is going to be pretty intense oh big stasis big stasis is shock trapper going to counter stasis no he will not be counter stasising he's going to lose two tripods and he's going to back off 
tries to force fire the ground there because one of these tripods looks like it's not in the stasis, but it is. Uh, there is a mastermind here. I'm expecting a swarm ability to come in to deal with that. I don't, yeah, look at that. He, he danced around expecting the swarm ability. And is he going to counter stasis? He does counter stasis, but there are four tripods here. He does use in the buzzer swarm. That's quite good there for, uh, for Shock Trepper because he's killing quite a lot of those guys. He takes one of the tripods as well, and the mastermind will escape. He will get out of there. The Shock Troopers are not going to get it done. There's even a Mechapede here, an elite Mechapede, and he, will sh he should be able to crush through here right now. It, uh, uh, reinforcements are coming for Futurama, plus he gets the unstasis here, but this flank is being destroyed. He's got quite a lot here, and he's crossing the T. This is great for Futurama. He can put a lot of gunfire down range here, but reinforcements for Shock Trepper are also coming in. This is what I'm talking about. This is the fight that's going to determine who wins the game. The Mastermind is sort of just gun-ho in there and it's so close. I don't know who's going to win. I don't know who. He takes the tripod at the back, shoots these guys in the back, can't swarm it down. It's just going to be Shock Trepid, I think. He's just going to come out ahead, but Futurama is recovering husks like there's no tomorrow. There's one Gunwalker there, and that one Gunwalker is just sniping those down, and I think that's going to be the difference. He will gain another one. He might be okay. There's only three tripods left. If he can retake these hearts, no, he's losing these assimilators now. Not able to secure this. Gets a big EMP off, but these two tripods will change position. The gunwalkers are preventing any capture from occurring. Futurama, nice attempt at trying to get the husk. Not going to happen. He's not going to be able to fight that. So that's that was actually quite an intense fight. Heavy hitting, but very intense. Both sides trying to maneuver for the stasis. But yeah, shock trip. But I just have to emphasize, he barely scraped through there at the end he only had like two tripods left and then it was just a handful of gun walkers and that was it if Futurama had a good effort to try to get the husk back he actually reclaimed a few because he was double portaling out assimilators there but quite a number of assimilators getting picked off wasn't going to happen at the end 159,000 142,000 pretty tight that's 17,000 in favor of Shock Trepid but that's it Shock Trepid has a 4-2 lead in the series which means he cannot lose the series he can only look at a draw Futurama's gonna have to win the next two games in a row to force a draw that's how the best of eight series works uh, but if Shock Trepid wins just one more game then he'll be the uh, an inexhaustible or unattainable lead and he will win the series so four games two in favor of Shock Trepid Futurama needs to bring it back uh, we've got game seven coming up right now Okay, guys, welcome to game number seven in the series between Shock Trapet and Futurama Champions League round one match of the week. Here we go, Tiberium Rift. And of course, we have the one and only Shock Trapet Russian on the east side. Sorry, west side. He's playing as Reaper 17. He has gone for the Spanker 17, and that means Shock Trap. No, not Shock Trapet. Uh, Futurama Russian is playing as Nod Vanilla on the east side. That's better. Uh, now, is this the first time in the series Futurama has drawn Nod? I'm not 100% sure. He does. He has actually picked random again in this uh, matchup here. He should be able to kill that. Interesting fact about militant squads, they actually do more damage than rifleman squads. And you're sitting there thinking, geez, they do more damage than rifleman squads. How, how come they can't beat a rifleman squad? Because uh, they actually have more health as well, by the way. Than a rifle is good. So you're sitting there thinking, how can they not win? It's because they have nine units instead of six. So each individual unit has less health. The health is spread uh, across the, the nine members, whereas uh, the GDI six members have uh, more health. So and the GDI members will kill the Nod members quicker, diminishing the firepower of the Nod mil militia squad much faster. So it's all a depletion of firepower. Going to find these units here. He's going to be able to clear that garrison pretty quick, smart. A bit risky to do this against Nod. I mean, they have Raider Buggies. They could rush you as well. Actually not going to be able to engage that Buzzer Swarm there. Try to engage those units. Battle Markers over here. It is going to be a flame open. We have the... And look, he slams down the Operation Center way out there. He's going to move the MCV. He gets the spike, but I mean, coming in, he's going to spot this. Now, does he realize it's up? No, he doesn't realize just yet. He's going to spot the Flame Tank, so he now he knows. He must know what's up. He's got these guys moving in here, but did he spot this flame tank? Does he know that one's there? He can surely assume there's at least two out. Seeker tanks are on their way. Only three harvesters were able to be produced during this period because, again, he did open with the six squads. Is it six? One, two, three, four. No, only five. And this flame tank is going to chase them. The other flame tank, I think, is what future armor is expecting to deal the damage and that one is sneaking through actually oh my god he doesn't realize that's there this shard walker is going to engage it but i mean the shard walker doesn't have that much dps is going to get some uh, shots on it now with the seeker tank 
I think he's going to panic and pull that back here. Some of the disintegrator is getting burned up as well. He's going to force fire the ground, which is going to take out the reactor. He's going to lose a refinery as well. So paying dividends here, that first flame tank really hitting him for a six. This flame tank really has no choice but to beeline, but he is going to head to the top of the map. I guess maybe he feels he can destroy, destroy the disintegrator. It's not going to happen. That is down. Reaper drone platform is on the far left side. Second ref is down. He's four and two, so he's actually ecoed behind this. So he's, he's not looking too bad. There is a black hand squad somewhere. There it is. He's got a buzzer swarm there. Can he actually... He will de-garrison. Can he fight that buzzer swarm? He gets it and he gets back in, but I think most of the squad was killed. No, oh, no, there's still a decent amount in there. It's going to be enough, I think, to destroy the spike. Oh, maybe not. Oh, he's actually almost healing through the damage. Not quite, though. Reaper, 17. Shock Trap is going to go for the blue tip field. Quite a, a lot of blue tip there because, of course, we had a funky opening, so... A little bit more for the, uh, a little bit more time for the blue tip to grow. Where did all these seeker tanks come from? <laughs> oh my god, he's going to have to pull that scorpion tank. Nice save there, but for how long, really? That he's not even getting repairs. Oh, that's unfortunate. The drones just sort of overshooting. Nice, a nice job there to shoot that damage seeker tank. Two more tanks, luckily or thankfully, rock up, and they will actually save this from being destroyed. He loses another tank though, takes out a seeker. He's gonna chase, he can get that tank, will get it, so that's nice, gets one back. Those disintegrator squads, I have a feeling that they are gonna come down here and without a shredder turret ready, he's beelining for the enemy base. Oh my God, he's gonna push and he didn't go for a ref. Oh, he hasn't gone for a ref, which means he's gonna have a ton of units coming out very shortly. Scout over there as well. The Scorpion tanks will clean up the last of the Seeker tanks. Doesn't quite get that last tank, but I mean, Disintegrator is going to come out. He's What is he going for? He's going for a tech center. I'm not 100% sure. The Disintegrators are in. Cells. He had to sell the Warp Sphere here. He doesn't have a Shredder turret. He needs to get one right now. The Militant Squad can buy some time. He's going to try to crush with the Scorpion tank. He's basically just sacrificing the Scorpion tank at this point. And he's just going to come against more Disintegrators here. Is he going? No, he's going double warp sphere uh, devourer tank. Interesting. He could have just gone single. I mean, he could have just put a, a, a tier two down first and then just pumped tons of them out with the photon cannons. And scorpion tanks would have just been obliterated by that type of defense. They would have had no chance. He's going to find the scorpion tank there, but again, he's just going to back up. I mean, this is hull damage that, that Future Armor cannot repair. He doesn't have a war factory here. Oh, he's actually got a war factory there. He sold both of his war factories. This is the third war factory he's produced in this game so far. Sold the first two. Is going to pull back. He doesn't have an expo. I mean, neither does Shock Trapper. I think he might be going for a refinery here. Doesn't have any charge on that dev tank. He's going to want to get some charge on the dev tank. Maybe he's going for infantry. I'm not 100% sure what his game plan is here. Shock Trap is sitting directly on the Tiberium. You think he'd charge up these forces now. The Scorp tanks are heading north. Does put down a refinery. He's going to try to focus down the uh, the turret. He will get it. He's going to find a blue tip harvester. There's actually nothing up here to defend. Oh my god, he's found a gap. He's caught these guys out of position. These dev tanks will reverse move to respond. He's going to try to stall. So he's going to try to stall here with this one dev tank. Try to move it around the war factory. Do as much damage as he can. He's going to lose it. He can't save it. It's going to go down. He's having real trouble dual war factoring out these dev tanks. I think he's gone too heavy. He went too heavy, but now these four dev tanks are here. That's a problem. You know, they, they could mince through those. No charge on them, though. He needs to get them charged up. He needs them charged up ASAP. Corruptor comes down. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, he's almost out of Tiberium, not quite. I mean, he's got four harvesters there. Sooner or later, he's going to burn up. This is a very low economic game. Photon Cannon comes down now. And he's going to try to focus down the laser turret. Is there another one coming? He, he, there was, but he cancelled it. So that one's down. And these dev tanks will catch some scorp tanks just transferring across again. No charge on them. That de oh man, Futurama. He is moving these dev tanks in here, but again, photon cannons and dev tanks. No charge on the dev tanks. If he had some charge, it would be very, very, very one-sided. But he doesn't have charge, so he's going to pull back. Nice positioning with the buzzer hive around the back of that re that refinery. I mean, what are you supposed to do about that? You can't do anything. I think Futurama is basically done. He has enough tanks to make a final assault, but. The chances of that final assault working. He has to sit back and repair. Yeah, he doesn't have any. And he, he, I mean, he drove over the Tiberium and still didn't charge. This really gets me. He's going to get pushed up against this mountain. Oh my god, this is the moment that Futurama can try to kill some of these dev tanks and get back in. He gets one. He's going to get two. 
Not bad. There's two more over here. It's sitting on Tiberium, no charge. This is one of them games where you're sort of just scratching your head and it's like, does he not understand that he can charge these up and then just easy clap down these tanks? These tanks will die in three hits to charge devs. It's going to try to focus down the construction yard. He's going to move forward. Shock Trepid's going to have to back up straight away. He will do so. Turret comes down. He's going to try to chase him. He's going to get another kill as well. So this is the thing. Two more devs come out of nowhere though. And even without charge, this is going to be enough to seal the deal. These tanks will be destroyed. Well, Shock Trippet sort of opened the door and is like, you want to come in, buddy? You want to come in? And then by, by not charging his devs, but thankfully he still had enough left in the tank there to get more devs out and win the game. Oh, his economy was significantly ahead there. 1.54 kill death ratio. So Shock Trippet... He's going to come out with a round one victory. Five games to two versus Futurama. Futurama can't be too disappointed. He does take two games. And in the league, percentage is going to be important. So, you know, obviously Futurama would have wanted to have win, won the series and we were expecting it to be close. It was pretty close, but Shock Trap at the end of the day is going to merge victorious. He just had too good a start to the series. He was too, he got those first few wins and then Futurama did bring it back, but then, Futura, but then Shock Trap just put his foot down so great start for for shock trap it there futurama plenty of time to get back into it's only round one but anyway hope you enjoyed match of the week my name's green zero stay tuned to the champions league and my channel and i'll catch you all in the next video